own brother was the one that negotiated and signed the deal to receive the money. Will the Prime Minister accept to call his brother to a parliamentary committee to answer questions about this? ArriveCan was created for the cost of $54 million. Uh, experts have said that this app could have been created with simply $200,000 over a week. Since Justin Trudeau took office in 2015, his government has faced several controversies that have shaken the Canadian political landscape. Elbowgate Incident In 2016, Trudeau was involved in a physical altercation on the floor of the House of Commons with opposition MPs during a debate over a controversial assisted dying bill. That the Liberals had cut off debate. Now watch this. The man in the front is the Conservative whip. He can't get by a group of NDP MPs, including leader Tom Mulcair. On the left, the Prime Minister comes striding over to intervene. He has words with Mulcair. At the same time, he clearly also makes contact with MP Ruth Ellen Brosseau. Trudeau walks away. The Norman Affair. Vice Admiral Mark Norman was charged with breach of trust for allegedly leaking government secrets, but the case was ultimately dropped. It raised questions about political interference in the judicial system. It's just to get to court, get this dealt with as quickly as possible and get back to serving the people of Canada. The ship is there, the workers are there, it's an important project and it has to move forward as planned. The feds backtracked and quickly approved the contract, but furious over the leak, they ordered the RCMP to investigate. Enter Vice Admiral Mark Norman, the military's second in command. The RCMP alleged that for over a year he leaked cabinet secrets to unauthorized parties, including Davy to help the shipyard secure the contract. In January 2017, Norman was suspended from his job. And more than a year later, he was charged with one count of breach of trust. This has been a really difficult time, and it's going to continue to be a real challenge. Norman vehemently denies any wrongdoing, but the case has led to many questions. Why did the Conservatives change the rules around procurement? And why were the Liberals hesitant to let Davy have the contract? Those questions all set the stage for a high-stakes political drama. SNC-Lavalin scandal. One major scandal involved the SNC-Lavalin affair, where Trudeau was accused of pressuring his former attorney general to intervene in a criminal case against a Quebec-based engineering firm. Legal fight finally over. SNC's construction division pleaded guilty to fraud. It now admits it paid millions to Saadi Gaddafi, the son of former Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi, to try to win contracts. Now the company will pay a $280 million penalty and spend three years under probation. The Crown insists it's not a slap on the wrist. I challenge everyone to find uh, a fine that is higher than that for a criminal offence by a company. Charges of corruption against the main company were withdrawn, so SNC-Lavalin won't be barred from bidding on public contracts, which had been its worst-case scenario. We Charity Scandal Another significant controversy was the We Charity Scandal, in which the government was criticised for its close ties to the charity and alleged conflicts of interest in awarding it a lucrative contract for a youth volunteer program. I made a mistake in not recusing myself immediately from the discussions given uh, our family's history. And I'm sincerely sorry about not having done that. We know that Justin Trudeau is uh, only sorry when he gets caught and, and that's what the apology was all about today. The blackface incident. Furthermore, Trudeau's past incidents of wearing blackface and brownface were highly condemned leading to accusations of racial insensitivity and a breach of trust. I attended an end-of-year gala where the theme was Arabian Nights. And I uh, dressed up in an Aladdin costume and put makeup on. I shouldn't have done that. I should have known better, but I didn't, and I'm really sorry. I think uh, there are people who've made mistakes in, uh, in this life, and you make decisions based on what they actually uh, do, what they did, uh, and on a case-by-case -case basis. I think uh, I uh, deeply regret 
that we that I did that. Uh, I should have known better. Aga Khan controversy. Additionally, there was the Aga Khan controversy, where Trudeau was found to have violated federal ethics laws by accepting a family vacation on the private island of the Aga Khan, a billionaire philanthropist and spiritual leader. Transparency rules exist for a reason. Not only did the Prime Minister accept an illegal trip to a private island, he went there and received additional gifts from someone who is actively lobbying the government. Those are the facts. So will the Prime Minister come clean and tell Canadians, did he return those illegal and unacceptable gifts before he could be lobbied again? Lobbying registry that they were set up to lobby the government. How could it not have occurred to you that that might not have been okay? The fact is, we work, uh, the, uh, sorry, let me just try to reorder, reorder the thoughts. We um, worked with uh, the, the uh, uh, lobby conflict of interest commissioner uh, on a regular basis on a broad range of issues uh, when the issues come up. On this issue of a, a family vacation with a personal friend, um, it wasn't uh, considered that there would be an issue there cash for access fundraisers. Trudeau was criticized for attending high-priced fundraisers where wealthy donors paid for access to him and his cabinet, potentially influencing government policies. I know that the Liberals would like to try to uh, make it seem like this wasn't a big deal, that this was potentially a, 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 you know, a, a lack of judgment or a lapse in judgment, but it's important that Canadians can have confidence in their, in, their, in their institutions and in their politicians and people who have great power in this country, the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister uh, being you know, the two most powerful po uh, politicians in our system. And that in order to uh, be trusted with that power, they have to be open and transparent and accountable. So I think it is a, a serious lapse in judgment for the Prime Minister not to realize that there was a conflict in the first place to me is a tremendous lack of judgment. I, you know, I accept him at his word today, but it does seem like this Prime Minister was, uh, you know, made the decision that it was easier to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. Mr. Speaker, the saga of the sale of the BC retirement homes to mysterious Chinese investors is getting murkier. We know the Prime Minister was approached at a cash for access fundraiser regarding this deal. Yesterday, the Innovation Minister had to stand in this house and apologize for misleading Canadians regarding the true ownership, and 20 operating licenses were issued in one week. Clearly, the fix was in. One of the residents uh, phoned me, and she said she's very worried about this particular issue and how it will affect vulnerable seniors. So I will ask the minister again, will they finally show some respect and tell these seniors who owns their home? Mr. Speaker, the Liberal Party uh, is up to its old tricks again. Today, we have bribery charges against one of Kathleen Wynne's top advisors and also against an Ontario Liberal bagman who once held a fundraiser for our Prime Minister. And now we have our Liberal Prime Minister and his cabinet refusing to acknowledge their own ethical violations mm -hmm. with the cash for access scheme. Mr. Thank Speaker, you. this is a lesson for the Prime Minister. He can take action immediately and enforce his own ethical standards, or he can end up like Kathleen Wynne. What's he going to do? Yeah. Ethics violations. Trudeau has been repeatedly found to have violated federal ethics laws, including his acceptance of gifts, his involvement in the We Charity scandal, and his failure to recuse himself from discussions that could financially benefit his family. These scandals have contributed to an erosion of public trust and have raised concerns about the ethical standards and transparency of the Trudeau government. Well, it's definitely a family business for this Prime Minister, whether it was the wee charity paying his brother and mother money, the Prime Minister claiming to know nothing about it as he handed a half billion dollars over to that organization, or the Trudeau Foundation, which got $140,000 from the dictatorship in Beijing for the specific purpose of influencing his decisions in politics. But now we know that his brother, his own brother was the one that negotiated and signed the deal to receive the money. Will the Prime Minister accept to call his brother to a parliamentary committee to answer questions about this? Ruined international relations with foreign countries. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's incompetence has diminished Canada on the international stage. Canada is not part of many international groups which it is used to be. Opposition leader Pierre Poliev called him incompetent and unprofessional in one of the interviews as Trudeau faced criticism for his handling of international relations with countries like India and China. Trudeau's visit to India in 2018 was marked by a series of missteps, 
including his attire choices and a perceived lack of diplomatic finesse, which strained relations between the two nations. Later in his visit to G20 meeting held in India in September 2023, he falsely accused India publicly over K-terrorists' death without any proof and ruined the strategic relation even further. Additionally, his government's stance on human rights issues and the arrest of Huawei executive Meng Wanzhou caused tensions with China. Sabrina, did you violate the sanctions? Miss Meng, what's your reaction to being granted bail today? Meng, what's your reaction to being granted bail today? Miss Meng. Uh, was uh, given uh, a, uh, a hearing immediately. Uh, she had, it was uh, the full, uh, open, transparent nature of our judicial system. She was granted bail. She is uh, now uh, in her own home uh, in Vancouver. Uh, Later, there was another issue with Chinese interference in Canada's government also caused a lot of frustration among Canadians. incredibly important uh, that uh, that we continue to protect Canadians uh, from uh, any and all types of interference and uh, one of the things we're focused on in this inquiry is recognizing yes China and Russia are uh, responsible for interference but uh, other countries uh, engage in it as well and uh, this uh, commission will engage in um, looking at the broad suite of interference in Canada While it's essential to acknowledge that international relations are multifaceted, Trudeau's approach in these instances was perceived as inadequate, which contributed to strained ties with India and China, and raised concerns about Canada's diplomatic effectiveness on the global stage. The $54 million arrive Canap scandal sent shockwaves through the Canadian political landscape, unraveling a narrative of financial mismanagement and alleged corruption. The controversy, which emerged in the fall of 2023, exposed a series of irregularities surrounding the development and implementation of the widely touted mobile application intended to facilitate border crossing procedures. Imagine a lifetime movie. Imagine a lifetime movie that includes the elements of identity theft, forged resumes, contractual theft, fraudulent contracting, and collusion. Well, Madam Speaker, you don't have to imagine this lifetime movie because it actually exists. It is the ordeal behind ArriveCan. ArriveCan was created for the cost of $54 million. Uh, experts have said that this app could have been created with simply $200,000 over a weekend, but instead $54 million, Madam Speaker, was spent on this app. And of that $54 million, $11.2 million, Madam Speaker, went to a company called GC Strategies, and $4.3 million, Madam Speaker, went to two companies called Karatix and Dalian. And I'll add that um, these companies actually have received $80.3 million from the federal government over, uh, over a significant uh, period of time. So it's, uh, it's very concerning that, uh, that these companies would receive these large amounts of funding for this $54 million. Despite these challenges, the Trudeau government has continued to govern with the support of NDP, but these scandals have left a lasting impact on the public's perception of the administration. His approval rating has nosedived drastically, and Canadian public is anxiously waiting for the next election in October 2025. Trudeau government scandals is really a troubled legacy that will go down in Canadian history.